All right. Last week, I was on a walk to Emmaus. It's a four-day retreat with, uh, with some, some guys that are even in, in this uh, room today. I'm looking out and seeing a, a few of them. Uh, it was wonderful. And the, the cool thing about this, before anybody gave a talk, we all collectively, all of us together, uh, invited the Holy Spirit in. This is just this invitation. It's one of my favorite prayers, and I'd like for us to all say this together this morning. Come, Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in us the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and we shall be created and you shall renew the face of the earth. O oh God, who by the light of the Holy Spirit did instruct the hearts of the faithful, grant that by the same Holy Spirit we may be truly wise and ever enjoy your consolations. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. This morning is called the power source. This is one of my favorite scriptures from the book of Acts. I've been reading the book of Acts uh, a whole lot lately as we've been in this uh, time of, of looking forward to what our church can do together at the, at the ministry center and, and all the blessings that are happening, all the transformations that are happening there. And we catch a glimpse this morning of, of what happens when the church is plugged in. It's this really, really cool glimpse of, of life together. And it's, I want you to see yourself in this story, and, and it's written in such a way that we do. I, I read, part, part of my favorite, when, when I open the Bible, if I had to pick a favorite place to open. It would be John, and then after John, Acts, which is the second volume of, of Luke. And, and when you read John, we, we've talked about this a, a good bit, but John, there, there's this character that's, uh, that's a little uh, scholar's debate on who this is, and it's the beloved disciple. You hear this a lot in John, the beloved disciple. And, and for the most part, scholars believe that it's the writer of this book that he wrote himself in, you know, that he could say, oh, the one that Jesus loved, you know, that's me, that's me. I'm the one, you know, but, but as I read it, another school of thought is that when you read the gospel of John and you come to this part where it says the disciple that Jesus loved, that you read yourself into that, that it is the reader that is being addressed. Fascinating way to read it. I, I encourage you to read John a different way. And when you, when you read, especially the end of the gospel of John, that it's, it's for you, that somehow you're in this unfolding story. And when we get to Acts, it's written to someone named Theophilus. You know this. And, and we think, you know, scholars believe that, that maybe this is uh, someone that's supporting Luke in his writing, like an actual dude named Theophilus. But when you, when you look at, or lady named Theophilus, who knows? Uh, but, but really the word Theophilus, it means loved by God or God lover. And it has a way of, of, when you read this and you understand this, that this is, this is not a story that just happened back then. This is, this is a continuing story of the Holy Spirit. And, and when you read the, the Gospel of Acts, you, you will read uh, that, that the main character, the one that acts, the one that's doing the action all through it, is, is the Holy Spirit. That the main character in the book of Acts is not Peter or, or John or, or Matthias or any of the others that are mentioned. It's, it's the Holy Spirit that, that acts. And the Holy Spirit, when we look back on our lives, should be the main character, the power source for us. I love what Wanda said this morning. She said, if, if God's not in this, then it's this ugly building and a bunch of clueless folks that are just trying to go in there and do it. Well, it, if we're empowered by the Holy Spirit, then it's not going to fail. It's our power source. We, we, we think about this as we, as we move forward. This, this past week, I, I, we watched again this little movie. I don't know if you've heard about it. Uh, the Force Awakens. Star Wars. Have you... Have you seen this? And, and it's interesting in that movie too because the, the main character uh, is, the main characters are different from the other Star Wars movies, but yet it's compelling because the main character is really the force acting in the lives. Well, 
Well, that's a, kind of a way of writing about something that we experience as the Holy Spirit. And because of the Holy Spirit acting in their lives, they're the symptom of that within the early church community and within our community is that they begin to do this together. But let me back up just for a second because this happens right at the beginning of Acts 2. The Holy Spirit comes through and, uh, and just as Jesus promised and, and it's wild and, and the, they, they, some folks think they've been drinking too much and, and, and Peter gets up and he gives this incredible sermon. And, and, he, and he weaves in the Hebrew scriptures with the life of Jesus and, he, and, he's, and he's pleading with them to, to accept this good news. And they do. And 3,000, 3,000 people come forward and pledge their prayers, presence, gifts, service, and witness to this incredible thing that God is doing within this community. And because of that, they begin to, to do this. They proscartario. If you say it with confidence, it's, it's right. They, they were committing themselves. Uh, oftentimes the, the, the text says that they were devoting themselves or committing themselves to this. And what this means, this is a really cool Greek word that means they, they were leaning forward. It literally means to lean forward with careful consideration in anticipation and thanksgiving. Which begs the question for us, what are the things that we proskatero in our lives? What are the things that, that captivate us, that, that get the most of our attention, that we lean forward with, with anticipation and thanksgiving? Maybe you do this as you watch the Spurs, You're leaning forward, anticipation and thanksgiving. Yeah, yeah, okay. And leaning forward. And they do this as a symptom of being plugged into the power source and they're dedicating themselves and committing themselves to these four things, the apostles' teachings. When we get to the apostles' teachings, I always read this and I thought, you know, it's like a nice picture of Peter or, or Paul or somebody, one of the apostles' teaching. But when you read this, it's, it's, not, it's not a verb. It's not that they were watching this apostle teach. It is... The noun, which means that the apostles' teaching is, it's the what. And the what you can find in the end of Matthew. Jesus said, teach them all that I have commanded you. Teach them to forgive. Teach them to love. Teach them the way, the truth, the life that I have shown you. This, this is what it means by, by leaning in proscaterio to the apostles' teaching. What Jesus taught them. That's what we're to be dedicated and committed to. The second thing, fellowship, koinonia, koinonia. Now this, this koinonia is, is uh, sometimes, you know, we do this without thinking about it, but it's the, it's the conversation, it's the prayer. I, I saw my, my you know, it's, it's the time together. It's, I, I love to think about it as like holy hanging out. Holy hanging out, getting to know one another. And I, I saw my, my brother, my brother Lewis was a little down this morning. I, I, I had a talk to him, man. I said, some of my sense in his spirit is a little off. What is it? And then I remember that his, his beloved dog had died. Man, I, my heart goes out to him. We, we, we're together in this. We share life together. This is the holy hanging out and, and hundreds and hundreds of conversations all, all around. This is why we have the breakfast in the back. This is why we, we go to the, the ministry center. This is why we, 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 we are together in this. It's holy hanging out. There's a book called When Helping Hurts that, that kind of guides our, our strategy as we, as we do ministry with poor people because we're all poor and we're all broken in some way. And, and we read this book called When Helping Hurts and uh, Steve Corbett and Brian Finkard wrote about this, this uh, community called New Song Community Ministries. And it's in Sandtown. It's, a, it's a, in a ghetto in Baltimore. And, and it's just the most horrible neighborhood that you could drive through. It's just a ghetto. And all of a sudden you get to, you get to New Song and they've, they've got 
blocks and blocks and blocks of this ghetto, and they've, they've rehabbed over 100 homes in the area, and they've, they, there's, a, there's a health center there, and there's all this ministry that they're doing there, and the, the, the guys from When Helping Hurts ha, had studied this. And they, they went to New Song, and they said, they said, okay, how did you do it? You know, how, how did you do it? We want to see the plans. We want to see the blueprints. We want to see how you did it. How did you, you know, how did you do it? And they said, well, you want to see the blueprints? And they said, yeah, you know, we want to see the plans. And they said, well, I thought you were asking us how we, how, how we did it. Because those are two different things. They said, well, what do you mean? He goes, well, we had some really generous donors that, that, donated to us, and we went there, and we, we hung out. We just hung out with the kids on the street. We played stickball. We took a bunch of folks to see Baltimore Orioles games. We had the greatest time together just, just hanging out, holy hanging out. This is what the church leans forward into and dedicates itself to, holy hanging out, the fellowship. And the breaking of the bread. Breaking of the bread together. And when you, when you read this, it, it's really not clear whether this means communion, the Eucharist, celebration of the Eucharist, or, or just eating together. Like, is it the Holy Communion or is it like the potluck? And the answer, of course, is both. It's both. It's both. And, and you think about it, there's this, uh, I learned this, this, uh, this Jewish expression that, that every table is an altar in some way. Think about how many conversations that have been holy that, that happen gathered around a table. Gathered around a table. Some amazing things happen when we share a common meal together. And then the prayers. The prayers were for them were not just the prayers that they prayed alone. Prayer is valuable whether it's whether it's from the heart or whether you're you're reading it together. But together we read this prayer this morning about come Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of the faithful. We did this together. And when the early church, when it talks about the prayers, it was the prayers that they prayed in the temple. And you can see this on, on the way to the, on the way to the temple. There they are. They're going in the, and, and this is why I love the Star Wars connection because uh, there's this scene for all the nerds out there, the scene in, in, uh, in Return of the Jedi where Luke walks in to, to get Han Solo from the Carbonite from Jabba the Hutt and the guys, and all of a sudden he's not this like little, little weak uh, Luke Skywalker that's hurt. He's like, walks past, you know. It's just, this, it's just this empowered by the Spirit. And we see this in, in Acts as well. We see this when Peter and John, they're going into the temple and someone asks them for healing or asks them for money. And instead they give healing. They're concerned not just with, with the, you know, the financial situation, but the whole person here. And they're empowered by this Holy Spirit, and they're on their way to do the prayers, the prayers of the people. And I thought a lot about this this past week is, is that I feel connected in prayer, and I feel like my prayers are, are heard by God, but I feel like there's something so much more powerful when we're all together in this, because we're a community of faith. And we pray for one another and we pray together. And this is the prayers that are mentioned here. And they were committing themselves to the teaching of the apostles and to the fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayers. And the main character in the story is the Holy Spirit. Now it's wonderful. And this is the symptom of, of a spirit-filled church. These things happen. But there's some other stories in Acts as well. It's not all the force. It's, it's the dark side too. And if you step back and you look at, you look at the whole thing, you look at all of Acts, there are, there are things that happen in Acts and things that happen in our church today that, that are not of 
the Holy Spirit. And if you look at Acts and you give it a real honest view, there are, there are these, these wonderful things that just leap off the page where the Spirit is moving and God is doing wonderful things. And there is also embezzlement. There is racial exclusion. There is infighting. All in this book. There is church self-destruction. It's all there. In their story and in ours. I, I, I love uh, 2 Corinthians 11. If you read 2 Corinthians 11, Paul is going on this, just this rant about all his hardships. He's like, I've been shipwrecked. I've been beaten with the rods. I've done all these. It's been horrible, blah, 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 blah. And to top it off, I have anxiety over the churches. I've got church trouble. <laughs> to top it off. And yet, and yet, here we are today. Here we are today. The, the, the fears and the failures, horrible, miserable failures of the early church did not stop the spread of the Holy Spirit. It did not stop what God wanted to do through us and in spite of us. It's a beautiful thing to know about today as this is our story. I think about all the ways in my life where, where, where I'm the main character. God, let me be the main character here. You know, how many times in my life do I do that without thinking about it? Do you do that where, where the main character in your story is, is you? And this is an invitation once again for ordinary people they were ordinary people. We're ordinary people. This is an invitation for ordinary people to do something extraordinary because we're empowered by the Holy Spirit and the main character in the story is God and God's love flowing through us and working in spite of us. In Jesus' name. Amen.